We are now almost approaching summer. It's the 2nd of May today and it's what we would call late spring. So all the maples and all the deciduous trees are well into leaf and many of the deciduous trees have made anything from 2 inches to 12 inches of growth in just maybe three weeks time. So let's have a look at what we need to do. This is what we call the first spring pruning. These maples here, if I pick up, we have hundreds of them. We have literally hundreds. Look at this one. Look at this one, for instance. These shoots have all grown, which is eight inches long, in the last two or three weeks. So if you leave them unattended, the tree will become so big and it will cease to be a bonsai. So I always just go around just pruning the ends and just keep it in a tight ball shape, nothing more. But I will explain that that is not the end of the story. So let's have a look at what I'm doing. This is just what we call very rough pruning. I know some of my critics will say this is not the way to prune. I know it's not the way to prune, but I have to go into the structure. But at least I'm keeping it within bounds. So that is the first stage. So just from one tree, I've got so much off. So that's the first thing I have to do. And the tools I'm using, just for those of you who are not familiar, these are what we call the general twig shears, which is very good for pruning shoots, long shoots, soft shoots. And this some people prefer to use as root pruners. But I prefer to use this personally because I like to get my hands into the handle here and I get a better grip. So it's all a personal choice. As long as they are scissors, they will do the job. I find that secateurs are over the top. You don't need secateurs. By the way, you've got to excuse the planes. Planes are going crazy today. Every one minute or every one and a half minutes the plane are coming into land. So that is what I would do with all these maples. So you can see in each of these baskets there are about seven maples and they all have to be pruned. They all have to be pruned. Let's walk along here and you will see. Now let me show you another example. Because every tree is different. Every tree is different. Now this one is one of our homemade trees. And by the way, most of the maples are made at Herons. I'll show you how we created this tree. About maybe two and a half or three years ago, we cut the main shoot, which is a long shoot. I may have even air laid it. So that is healing. It's got a lovely twist to the trunk. This is the front of the tree. And this is the future direction of the tree. If I wanted to make it more compact, I can cut it back there. But to make it more saleable, I just keep the long shoots trim so that it looks reasonable. So that is how I would prune that one. I'm going to show you how to prune each and every one of these trees. I noticed that there were quite a few comments on some of my other YouTube videos when I talk about the hard and soft leaves. When maples first emerge, the leaves are soft. I don't know why people ask that question, but you know, not everyone understands these terminologies. So when a tree first comes into leaf, the leaves are very soft. They're literally soft. Let me take you to one other tree. And this example, for instance, this is one of these rare trees. I think it is Higasayama. And at the tips of the shoots, this is what you call soft growth, very, very soft. And the leaves also haven't hardened yet. So this is what we call the soft growth. If we leave these leaves for another month, they get much harder. And so it is with all the maples. Like this is soft growth. This is always soft. It's not hard at all. I don't even need to look at uh, just maples. This is a Zalcova serrata. And you can see all the new growth here. So these leaves are new leaves. So this is called soft growth, absolutely soft. It's not hard. Pity I don't have an example of a leaf that has turned hard because we aren't into the season yet. But I will show you in future videos what we mean 
why the leaves getting hard. But at the moment, all these maples have just got soft leaves and all the deciduous trees have got soft leaves. Same goes for the cuttings. When we refer to hard cuttings and soft cuttings, what do we mean when the wood has hardened? Again, let me just stick to the Zalkova. When we make cuttings, we use what is called the current year's wood. That means the stem material that has grown in the current year. Now let's look closely at this shoot here. Now this wood here is what we call last year's wood. And this has gone hard. This has gone hard. This also is hard. You can see the difference in color. But all this, the four inches here, is what we call the current year's wood, the reddish color stems. This has what has grown in the last two weeks. And it's a different color and it's also softer. So this is current year's wood or what we call soft wood or semi hardwood. And they are what are best for making cuttings. You have to use the current year's wood, that means the wood has just been produced this year, and that makes an ideal cutting. If you try to make cuttings with hard wood, I'm not saying it won't root, but it takes longer to root. So that's the difference between hard and soft. So I hope that explains the situation. I'm going to look at some of these other maples as well, but now let's look at some of the bigger ones. Come on this side, uh, Josh, and we'll have a look. If you look closer at this tree, you will remember that this is a famous tree that I did two years ago, exactly two years ago. I took it out of a flower pot that had been um, used to plant this tree in, and the roots had literally gone round and round several times, and I had to use a crowbar and a pickaxe to tear the root apart, and then I carved it so that you don't see the marks and already you can see how well it's callousing. In just two years and I've got a complete tree. Let me show you how I'm going to prune this tree. Now look at this tree again. This growth here is the soft wood or the soft cuttings and this is what has grown literally in the last two or three weeks and it is more than eight inches long it's about nine inches long it's got one two three four five pairs of leaves in just two or three weeks so this would make an ideal cutting like that so this is what we call current years wood or what we call semi hard wood sometimes people refer to it as soft wood cuttings and what do i do with a tree like this again being a barber I'm not a barber, it's just an analogy. All we do is do a barber. I can probably engage a hairdresser to come and do this work. And if you can imagine, we have literally thousands of maples on the nursery. It is almost impossible to go through every single maple doing this. The ones which are going inwards, I would take off. This is a big tree, of course, so it takes more time because there are more shoots. So I'm literally taking off all the new soft shoots, but not just taking them off willy-nilly. I'm looking at the overall shape. So the overall shape, as I keep repeating, is this triangular shape or a dome shape. So you can see the overall shape, anything going long like this. And of course, by doing this, what I'm doing is increasing the ramification. That means the twig growth. So by stopping the ends, I force the side shoots to grow. So that generally is how ramification is made. You can talk all sorts of technicalities, but at the end of the day, I don't want to make it sound almost mundane, but that's what it is. It is simply pruning the ends, and it is, again, what I would call 
sophisticated topiary. You know how people prune hedges? So anyone who prunes a hedge could well be a good bonsai artist because he understands the principles of pruning. So this is where I always keep encouraging people to understand that bonsai is not rocket science. Definitely not rocket science. There's a bit of artistic skill. I'm now going in and creating. You see from the old wood, we talk of budding back from old wood. Look at that. It's absolutely thick wood here. And yet you get these new shoots coming. So you can produce no end of branches, new branches from this. So in just a couple of minutes I've done this. I need to go in more. It's got a lovely apricot pink color. So although this is not a name variety of maple, we just simply call all these maples mountain maples. I just noticed that some of these shoots are about 12 inches long. So let me see how much I've pruned. Come here and look. This is all I've pruned from this tree in just a couple of minutes. And I can still go in and look more closely at the tree and even take more off. So that basically has brought the tree back to its shape. Now looking at this tree, I can probably extend it a little more this side, encourage this side to go a little more. So I keep looking at the tree during the year to see how I can further refine it, maybe even grow this branch here pull this branch down because all these branches tend to grow upwards. I may put a piece of thick wire and wire this down like that. If you come close again, you will see in the previous year how I've used some thick wires to bend some of these branches down. Because without wire, or we even using guy wires, it's very hard to stop these trees growing upwards. So you see, there is some wiring on the maples just to prevent it going straight up. Now let's go to another tree. We have so many maples. Now this is a very major tree. Now this one, oh by the way, look at my wisterias. Look at my wisterias. Absolutely gorgeous. And the scent is heavenly, absolutely heavenly. Let's get these out of the way. Oh, that's okay. Now this tree, hasn't grown that much, but I still need to keep on top of it. So, it's strange how certain trees grow at a certain rate, isn't it? So, see this one has only grown like four inches at the tip, not eight or 10 inches. Maybe because it's been in this bonsai pot for much longer and uh, it's not pot down. So there's not a lot to do, but throughout the year, I have to keep an eye on these trees. Also in spring, I haven't talked about it so far, but you get what we call the insect pests. And fortunately, this tree is not riddled with it, but there are some pests. If you can see, that's a black fly. So aphids, you see the flies on this? So these I have to spray, unfortunately. Using washing up liquid and all these other formula doesn't usually work. You have to use insecticide to control the aphid problem. So they can suck the leaves and damage the leaves. You can see it's not too bad. There's just a few aphids on this tree. Now look at this tree. This is what I call my elephant foot tree. And if you look at it, this is the one with the hollow trunk. And what a lot of lovely young growth. And this one, look at this current year's growth. This is current year's growth. About more than 12 inches long. It's about 16 inches long. And there are aphids on this. Can you see the aphid, black fly? Black fly there. So these have to be controlled. Look at the aphid there. That's really bad. Really, really bad. So even with the best will in the world, you will get aphid problems. So this one, I have to prune these long shoots off just to improve the ramification. And by the way, we talk of protection of trees in the winter. 
This maple, this particular one, has not been protected at all during the winter. It has stood here right through the winter. So, it has been here 365 days of the year in this exact same position. So this maple is entirely hardy. Of course, in the British winters, the temperatures at night, maybe one or two occasions, it may go down to, say, minus seven, minus eight. But for the most part, we don't get very severe winters. So we are very fortunate in that regard. So we don't have to provide any elaborate uh, protection arrangements. I also find that trees that grow in large pots, like my trident maples, which are in large pots, they survive better because the root mass is quite large. If the root ball is small in a small pot, then I think you would have to protect them much more. So these are just, just general common sense ideas that I'm passing on to you. But very often these ideas don't occur to people who are fairly new to bonsai. So it is worth saying something about it. So that is how I would have pruned this one. Now this one is a bit long on this side. So I'm being a bit more ruthless on this side. And of course the more you prune, the more new shoots you will get. And there will be more twigs, more ramifications. So this tree I like to show the hollow trunk so I don't want the leaves to hide too much of this because this is the main feature of this tree. I need to grow more on that side but this side was too vigorous. So that is that tree and the larches of course at this time of the year haven't started producing the new shoots. But these shoots will go long, and then you will have to prune the ends of this. I will show you how I deal with the maples as well. None of the larches, let's walk here and see if any of the larches have started producing long shoots. These are all the new growth on larches, so they are not as advanced as the maples. Now these shoots here will start getting long. And when they get long, you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it like that. But they haven't started growing yet. Can you see how they're growing? That's how they grow and we have to cut it back to that. See like here, you see how they start popping up? So that's how you deal with larches. See like that again, that's a typical example of a nice long shoot like that. We cut it back there. Now let's move on to something else. I think there are lots of maples around, so maples are going to take me a good bit of time. I want to show you one particular tree which I will refer to because I did an earlier video about it. If you refer so to the video that I produced on the 26th of June last year, I put out a video where we dealt with three trees that belong to a customer and this was a very difficult tree because this gentleman had pruned the tree partly and he lost his way and he didn't know what to do. He pruned a major branch there and he pruned a major branch there leaving it completely one-sided, completely one-sided and I had to redesign the front. So if you follow that video you will see what exactly what the tree looked like. I may just do a screenshot from that video for ease of reference so that you don't have to really hunt for the video. But you must admit that this tree, as it is, is looking quite respectable. If I can just show you some of the growth that has grown this year, look at this one. This shoot, which is about 12 inches long, has grown this spring in the last three weeks. And it's growing downwards, so I don't want that one. This also, more than 12 inches, is in the last two weeks it has grown. So are all these other shoots. Just shows how vigorous that is. Look at that, that's 18 inches of growth in three weeks. So I'm not cutting it completely back, I'm just cutting the ends. 
So at this time of the year, you have to deal with these shoots. These are all eight, 12 inches long shoots that have grown and they have all got to be taken back. Otherwise the tree will get completely out of control and you will lose control and lose the shape. So the first job with any pruning is simply to prune in the conical shape. Nothing more than that. Nothing more than that. I'm waiting to show the screenshot because the comparison with what it was like last year is quite astounding. There is so much change. Now this shoot I left is going upwards because there was nothing here. Now that there's more sp space filling here, I can take this off so that I create space in the pad there. And this one I can bring more this side. This is very congested. I may need to thin the top a little bit because if it is too congested, you will not get light into the structure inside and the inner twigs will die look at that i've taken out I've taken that much out so you have to what we call bite the bullet otherwise you lose control another long collection of branches and this is just to create space in here if i turn the tree around you can see you see how congested it is there I have to take some of these out to create the space. Come around this side, George. So I'm creating a space here. And then I have to create a space there. So you can see how I created that space. So this is essential, absolutely essential. If you don't deal with it, the tree will just look like a ball. Topiary, it won't be anything more than topiary. So there's a lot of work gone into this. Remember this is the back of the tree, the back side, not the front side. You must be saying that I'm a bit crazy, but can you imagine there's still about six months of growth or growing season left. And if you don't deal with it, it will get completely out of hand, out of control. So the overall shape is nice and the front is still open. I told you that last year that customer cut this branch off without knowing what he's doing. So I've left that. So I've got to now deal with that. I should be wearing a glove, but I'll just be careful. There are lots of buds coming out from this point, so I can produce a new branch here. And I always try and clean the cut up and then seal it. Last year we made a cut there if you home in close and you see how it's calcing there and I did put sealant so let me put some sealant on this 
You can use any sealant. That's just to prevent the moisture from oozing out. So that's what I've done to this tree so far. It's looking extremely good. And you see I did wire to create the crown because without the wire I would not have been able to fill that space. So there's a lot of work that has gone into it. So it's mainly back branches there and now this is the front branches. We need to develop a little more here with this new branch and this tree will be as good as new. And this is a new branch I'm developing here to fill this space. And the front is nice and open. I will allow some of these to develop, but not too many. So let them grow and then we will deal with maybe later in the summer. So this is a good example of how we deal with some of these maples. Let's move on to another tree now, because we have so many types of maples. Now this is typical of these trees. Look at this one. This maple, ordinary mountain maple, has produced like 18 inches of growth in just two or three weeks. So all these shoots have to be trimmed back. So, of course, I'm not complaining because the more growth you get, the more ramification you can make. So again, I prefer to use my favorite pair of scissors. Funny how different people have a preference for their own particular tools. So although this is not the conventional trick shears, I really like this design of tool because it fits my hand, hand very nicely. So this is simply means to the end. And the end of course is to create more ramification and yet preserve the shape, have a tidy shape inward grain branches we try to take out and of course whoever buys this tree they can have, have the pleasure of uh, styling it in whatever they, way they want so this is a bit sparse again prune that and while we are still on maples look at this shishigashira these are all our homemade trees Shishi is a very difficult tree to train, but you have to get on top of it, otherwise they lose control. See, it's getting a bit of out of hand, so I'm taking some of these things out. See, that one was also... I may try and take cuttings, but the internodes are so short that they don't root from cuttings easily, but I will have a go. They are best propagated by ailing Shishigashira. So that is the shishi for you. Now while I'm talking about pruning, there are so many other trees here as well. This is an ordinary native hawthorn that we grow. And again, look at that shoot. That is again in the last three weeks. This is in the last three weeks. So all these shoots have grown in the last two or three weeks and I have to just keep cutting it back. I can't reach, but you get the general idea. I have to just prune them back. Like that long shoot has to be cut back. And that parotia, that also has produced six inches of growth. That has also got to be pruned back into the dome shape to create the ramification. So if you look around here, we will just walk past. There are so many, so many trees that are beginning to go completely ballistic. All these long sheets have to be pruned. I'm not going to do each and every one of them because that'll be too boring for words. And let me talk about the crab apple because a lot of people buy the crab apple, they don't know what to do with them. So you can see that they finish flowering. And when they finish flowering, they will set fruit, but they will also send new long shoots out, like that one. Can you see these shoots? And if you leave it unattended, it'll get to 12 inches, 18 inches long in the next three weeks. So by taking out the tips like this one, I've already taken the tip out, so it's produced one, two, three, four, five, six new buds to create more branches. So by taking the tip out, you will constantly create more and more ramification. So while we are here, I will go to another tree. There are so many examples. Let's look at the white pines. This is the very old white pine. Look at that massive trunk. I started wiring this tree, but I didn't get around to completing it. It was such a long project. 
But let's look at the business about dealing with candles. I know I'm talking about deciduous trees, but because they're starting to grow, you look at here, there's a cluster of certainly one, two, three, maybe four candles there. If you are not sure, you can take half of the candle off or you can take the candle off completely like that one. You see that bunch? If you don't want the thing to get extended, take everything off and then it will bud further back. So that is how you deal with the candle. Sometimes if it's already too long, now this was last year's candle, but which became long like that. It's spoiling the shape. I can take the whole thing off like that. So you don't have to just keep taking the candle off because if you keep only taking the candle off, like this one, I have to take all that off because it was spoiling the shape. You can take it off to a point where there are some other shoots growing. So that in a nutshell is how you deal with these candles of the five needle pine at this time of the year. And I'm going to show you, there is one very good example of the Japanese black pine. If you take a view of this tree, this is the famous tree that I purchased in 1974. And when I bought it in 74, it was only that high. I will take a picture of the tree when it was used in my book, my first book, Bonsai, the Art of Growing and Keeping Miniature Trees. It was in a, like a semi-cascade pot, but it's grown over the years. I'm just growing the tree bigger so that it gets stronger. And let's look at the candles very closely. Now, these are going to be cones. Can you see these purple bits are going to form cones or could be flowers? So I will let it grow for a little while longer. So again, if you're wanting the tree not to get too long and extended, you either take half the candle off or take the entire candle off, leaving the short candles. You see how the bud back occurs further into the branches. So that is what happens if you keep doing that. This tree, because of its age, I reckon this tree is well over 100 years old because in 1974, the trunk was already this thickness. That's about 50 years ago. So I think this tree must be at least 150 years old. This tree was imported into the UK in 1962 and I am the third owner in the UK. So it got a bit weak. So I keep doing this, removing all the candles to get bud back here. So the objects are to get more buds. See, look, look at these buds coming. By constantly doing this, I will get more bud back. So I've got to go through the entire tree to do that, just to keep the tree under control. Now that I know it's growing well, if a tree is producing a lot of candles, then you know that it's a strong tree. So I won't spend too much of your valuable time, but just to show you that this is a task that I have to do all the time. Look at that one. Now that one is so strong. There are other buds that can take the entire shoot off like that, because I've got two buds there. So all these long shoots like that one, I've got, I can take that entire shoot off, not just the candle, the entire shoot comes off. So that is how we deal with these trees. Let me show you an example of juniper, because juniper is again a tree that not many people understand. The new growth of juniper is long like this. If you look at this tree, look at all those shoots. They are very ugly. So this is how the new shoots grow and they become branches if you're not careful. If you want to grow them into branches, you're welcome to like this one. I left this this here. So this can become a new branch if I wanted to. That can become a new branch. But at some stage, we deliberately leave these trees like this because a lot of people like to work on it themselves. It's not that we are lazy, we can easily do it. But many people uh, enjoy the process of refining the juniper. This is how junipers are refined. If you can see, we have to thin it out and grow it more like this. See, so that's a long shoot that we left again. So that could become a long branch. So that's why it's been left. So many of these are deliberately left because there is a purpose for doing that. But the general principle of pruning junipers is simply to tackle these long shoots. These, by the way, are flowers. Can you see these little white bits? 
they're juniper flowers so they produce flowers and then you get the juniper berries so if you want to keep control of the tree simply doing this will keep it under control these long shoots that come out but i'll show you on another occasion how to refine some of these junipers to get the structure the desired structure correct so that briefly is how you would deal with the juniper so all these long shoots have to be dealt with that way i noticed that there is a horse chestnut or conquer tree here this is a tree that we used to exhibit at the rhs gardens in wisley so it's a very nice example it is in fact a red one it's grafted there and these are all the new shoots conquer trees are one species that withstand leaf pruning extremely well so at this time of the year if you went around and took all these big leaves off you can even strip the tree completely take every single leaf off and you will get new leaves popping out very very quickly so don't be afraid to do that if you do that the second crop of leaves will stay small like this you also create more branch or ramification can you see how the new shoots are coming from the very old wood by constantly tipping the ends you will get more twigs developing so this is how you would deal with conquer trees i know not many people know how to handle conquer trees but this is the uh, job you have to do i will show you another large conquer tree here and this conquer tree here this is a really big one. So on this tree, let me just go through very quickly. I will begin by taking the large leaves off, leaving the small ones. But when the large leaves have disappeared and you're left with the small leaves, the small leaves will also become large and you'll have to deal with these in turn. So it's a never ending job of removing the leaves just to get the leaves going to scale. See, you can't see the trunk, so you're doing the tree a service. I know that by constantly doing this, you're going to weaken the tree because the leaves after all are the food factories of the trees. So if you keep removing the leaves, the tree doesn't get a chance to uh, get strong it's being deprived of nourishment but being a vigorous tree i know that you will get new growth coming very very quickly it doesn't take time for new growth to appear i don't like to describe these jobs as chores a chore for those of you who don't understand the term a chore is usually a word which we use to describe a boring task. But who would say that this is a boring task? This is not a boring task. I know that if you have to earn your livelihood, growing and selling bonsai it can become tedious. But I'm glad that I still enjoy my work. I think that applies to anything. If you don't enjoy your work, then I think you should give up. Of course, at this time of the year, it's not only the bonsai and the trees that grow, it's the weeds that also grow. So weeding is one of the biggest uh, chores that we have on the nursery. Never ending chore keeping the pots weeded because the seeds from other plants especially the grass seeds they spread around so look at that look at the number of leaves I've taken off from that tree and I can take more off and hopefully the second crop of leaves is going to be much smaller while we're talking about it look at this oak tree this oak tree has only just started sprouting so it has nothing to prune yet but I will have to prune it in due course also this dawn redwood this has just started coming into leaf so there's not much to do on this one so I hope I've gone through most of the spring tasks 
the next video I'm going to do, it's looking around, all these wisterias are coming to bloom. They will need to be pruned after flowering, but let's see them flowering first. So we've got a lot to show you in the coming weeks. So thank you very much.